Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, 2021's uh, Bitcoin SV DevCon. My name is Xiaohui Liu. I'm a founder and a creator of Ascript. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a technique called outpush transaction and uh, talk about uh, what kind of uh, smart contracts and applications can be built upon it. So let's get started. So uh, I'll briefly mention about uh, what, what this technique is. And uh, I also mention about uh, how, do, how it is implemented internally. And uh, then I will show what we can do uh, with it. And uh, eventually, of course, I'm going to show some working demo, which I show you a, a fully on-chain Bitcoin game running on Bitcoin today. So what is a output transaction then? So for people who have been into Bitcoin space for a while, we know that Bitcoin uh, has miners and the miners very, uh, verify transactions by using this uh, native Bitcoin language called um, Bitcoin script. So basically the Bitcoin script is interpreted by all the miners in the so-called uh, Bitcoin virtual machine. So Bitcoin virtual machine, they have the list instructions, which uh, usually we call it all code. So here I will show a few examples here. For example, op2. So basically what it does is, uh, because of the virtual machine is a stack based, so all the operations are going to um, be on stack. So op2, I just push the number onto the stack. We also have op add, basically it, it pops two elements off the stack and add them up and uh, push the sum back. And we also have op equal, so basically it compares two elements on top of the stack and uh, if it's equal, it push one onto the stack, otherwise it push zero. So an uh, output transaction, you can think of uh, an, as another opcode that, what does it do? It just push the current transaction onto the stack. That's it, that's it. So what is the current transaction then? So uh, if you look at the right of the screen, you can see a diagram here. So basically we have one transaction and uh, another transaction then spend it, transaction two. So when the contract is always in the locking script. So when we are calling this uh, smart contracts in transaction one, actually, when we run our push transaction, it's going to push the current transaction, which is transaction two onto the stack. I think uh, briefly we mentioned uh, it will push the current transaction onto the stack. And actually that's not uh, precise. So if you uh, really want to be precise, what it does is a call, it just push the current uh, sick hash pre-image on top of the stack. So what is uh, this uh, pre-image? So if you know about Bitcoin, when we just send normal Bitcoin transactions, uh, funds to each other, so we always verify the signatures, right? Right. So what does the how does the signature come from? So basically, uh, you first generate this pre-image, a sick hash pre-image, and then you you sign this pre-image with your private key. So this is what you actually sign. It includes most of the part of the transaction. So we can here see you have a version number, you have uh, inputs, you have outputs, you also have uh, end sequence and end log time. And besides that, we pay attention here, you also have uh, information about the UTXO that's being spent. For, for example, four and five. This is uh, the UTXO and six, the UTXO uh, Satoshi amount. So I think uh, we briefly call it uh, uh, opcode. Actually, that's not uh, precise. To be to be one hundred percent precise is that's if you check the list of all the opcodes available in Bitcoin Script today, even we re enabled uh, all of them, the, you cannot find an opcode called uh, push or push transaction. So in reality, is uh, implemented uh, with existing opcodes. So you can think about this as a pseudo opcode, which is built upon all the other existing opcodes. So if you talk about, uh, we, when we talk about the Bitcoin transaction script, we always talk about the 
the so-called uh, ECDSA signature algorithm. So how do we use this uh, algorithm to get the current pre-image? So we look, look at the diagram here. So we have a few steps. So first, after we have the pre-image, we sign it with a public key. Then we get a ECDSA signature, right? And then we use uh, the, another opcode called opcheckSig. This is uh, just a verify the signature against the public key, which is uh, derived from the pri private key. So if it says yes, then we are very sure this pre-image is actually the pre-image for the current transaction. Why? Because opcheckSig, it does cannot check signature against any other data. It can only work if the current data being signed is a pre-image for the current transaction. So where does the private key and the public key come from? So this actually can be, because it's just to check whether the Ccash pre-image is for the current transaction. So actually it can be arbitrary key pair. It, it doesn't even have to be private. So this is how, how it works uh, internally, how it's imp implemented. But the good thing about it is you don't have to uh, implement it yourself. So at S script, we'll, we build a library and high level abstract already taking care of all the low level details. So you only have to use it without, uh, you don't have to understand how it's implemented to use it. So what you can do then after we talk about, uh, it seems like a very basic primitive, even though it looks uh, simple, but actually can enable us to do a lot of uh, things that's uh, deemed impossible before. For example, you can control spending so what does it mean? So when Alice sends uh, Bob some Bitcoin, usually when Bob gets it, he can do whatever with it, right? So with output transaction technique, you can actually control uh, how the receiver is going to spend his fund. So that's something that's impossible to do before. And also we have another big category of uh, contracts that it uh, only uh, available to us because of this uh, technique but uh, basically you can maintain state within Bitcoin smart contract. So a very nice property of it is uh, just happened to print, to prove uh, Bitcoin is actually turn complete. So let's get to see some examples. First of all, let's look at the examples. How do we control spending? So here I have uh, two examples. The first one is called uh, check log time verify. So for people who have been uh, familiar with script, there's another off code called uh, check uh, exactly the same name of check time uh, log, log time verify CRTV in BTC chain. So what it does is, so for a uh, UTXO for some coins, you can you can lock up the funds such that only after certain deadline, you can spend the coins again. So the difference between this and uh, the so-called end lock time is end lock time is is in terms of the works on the level of transaction versus this works on the level uh, granularity of uh, coins, UTXOs. So how is this implemented? So if you look at the, if you know about the S script, so basically this is uh, the main function here, public function called spend, and we pass a parameter called uh, uh, transaction pre-image. So in, in this line, we require uh, the pre-image has to be for the current one. So basically this line alone, this one single line, just check whether this pre-image is for the current transaction using the output transaction, just one single line and we are done. So after we we get this uh, pre-image, we can, we can pass it, right? So for example, here we have a wrapper, basically helper, just can get the unlock time out of it. So we demand you can only spend this coin uh, after the unlock time, if the unlock time is no smaller than the predefined mature time. So basically this basically says uh, you cannot spend coins before the mature time. Basically implemented of CRTV, but with uh, just using existing of course, thanks to the technique of output transaction. So the second one called uh, pay to script hash. So for people who have been familiar with a uh, script, you know 
that's on BTC chain. There's also a, a way to unlock funds called uh, pay to script hash. So here, what we do the same thing here, but uh, just using that with, without explicit uh, opcode support. So how do we do that? So again, we pass in the transaction pre-image. We check is it for the current transaction. And after we have the pre-image, what do we do? We demand the is uh, this uh, redeem script is hashes to the predefined uh, script hash. Make sure this redeem script is correct. And then what do we do? We require the output has to contain this redeem script. So basically, this is one way to control how the next transaction output is going to be controlled, how it can be spent. It, this new transaction can only be spent if you can unlock the new redeem script. So basically, you can achieve the pay to script hash by with two transactions. One, at once, when you spend this next, you have to provide the redeem script, measure the hash, and then the new, uh, in the new transactions uh, output, you will contain this redeem script. And then you have a follow up transaction, which can unlock the redeem script. So you achieve the same thing, but uh, with just uh, existing opcode, no change. Okay, so now let's look at some more examples. So we mentioned uh, earlier, so we can actually using this technique to implement state within Bitcoin script, which is deeply impossible before this introduction of this scheme. So how, how does this work? So one way would be in the locking script, we divide it into two parts. So we call it the code part and the data bus. The code part, so think about here with, uh, uh, you can think about it as, as uh, analogous to object in object-oriented programming. So code part, is uh, equal to the 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 locking script is a whole as an object. The code is similar to methods in object already programming, and data is just a state of uh, properties and uh, member variables in in the object. So code part we we maintain is immutable, so you cannot change it when you spend it, and data path is can be mutated. So I'm showing you one example, the simplest example of maintaining a state called a counter. So basically it maintains a counter. Every time you spend this, you, you call this smart contract, you spend this UTXO, you have to increment the counter by exactly by one. So let's look at one example here. So here we have transaction one, we should deploy this contract. So when the next transaction two is going to spend it, so basically this contract does two things. First, it checks, make sure the code part does not change, okay? And then it uh, makes sure this data part, which is the state, and here for us, in this simple example, it's just the counter has to incre increase by exactly one. So you can see now every, the output, the code part doesn't change, but only the the data part is incremented by one. So if somebody wants to spend this into another regular output, P2P cache will fail because the code, the output script will just not match the locking script as we demand in this original contract. So you can imagine once you have to go from zero to one, you can, if you pay uh, enough transaction fee, you can go to the next transaction with transaction three, it will keep going. Just every time you call it, you have to provide a counter that's exactly bigger than one, than the one before it. So for example, here, if you want to use in transaction three prime, so if you happen to use three, counter three here, it will fail because three is not equal to one plus one. So in this simple example, we, we see how state can be propagated uh, using push transaction technique. And what others can be implemented once we can maintain state? Yeah, actually there's a, because this uh, state is just uh, arbitrary data, so it can be any arbitrary 
um, program that uh, you need uh, to maintain a state, any arbitrary state you can do. For example, a big category will be fully on-chain peer-to-peer games in this kind of game. Uh, not only the data part, but also the, the business logic, the code logic, the, the game rules is also enforced by the miners. So the on-chain games, you can have, uh, we implement quite a few examples, for example, the Conway Game of Life, which I show on the right-hand side. So basically, this is the two-dimensional cellular automata. We deploy this on mainnet, and uh, because uh, the Game of Life itself is uh, truly complete by implementing this, directly on chain, we actually proved Bitcoin itself is chain complete. So it's a very powerful technique. Even if it uh, looks simple at the beginning, at the first class, is uh, you can derive a lot of very sophisticated uh, contracts out of it. We also have, a, I think I'm going to show it later, based in Tic-Tac-Toe and they also implement uh, rock, paper, scissors. So of course, everyone loves uh, tokens, so we, because if you think about tokens, if it's fungible ones, you, the state is just a one big giant token balance table. So you, you have uh, one column says uh, who's the token holder and on the other column you use uh, the balance for this uh, owner. So if you can embed this big to table as a state and then propagate it, uh, you get tokens. Uh, also, of course, similarly, you can have a uh, non-fungible tokens as well. And uh, also we implement uh, some other financial contracts like auction or uh, options. And we also even have a uh, token sale contracts. Also we implement a checking account. So basically you can spend, uh, for example, you can set a daily spending limit on top of it. So you can never get uh, withdrawn or if you lose your, let's say your private key, you, at least you have some level of protection. It's a, make a lot of a practical contracts. So enough talk. I think uh, we talked about a lot of uh, contract examples. So I'm going to show you one that's working on the mainnet today. So it's, uh, it's a fully on-chain tic-tac-toe. So basically you can go to our official website called sgrip.io slash tic-tac-toe. You can play with it today. So let me actually demonstrate uh, how this works. So on my screen, on the, I have two components, which I already set up be, beforehand. So we have uh, on the left, Alice, and on the right, we have Bob. So Bob, uh, Alice uh, makes the first move. So now it's uh, Bob's turn. Bob going to, let's say, uh, make another move. He's uh, pressing big O here. And now it's Alice's turn. Alice can say, oh, let's uh, place it in the center. So be careful, uh, the, it's worth noting that all these moves, each move is actually a Bitcoin transaction. So for example, if you click here, you can actually take you to the block explorer, which is uh, everybody's favorite. Uh, I use what's on chain here. So basically you can look at each step. If you, by clicking, you can see all this is actually on chain transaction. Each of them is one transaction. So now let's keep playing the Bob's turn. Bob, let's say, is not uh, super strategic. So he makes this uh, fatal mistake. And uh, if you are, Alice is going to make the next move. Okay, boom. She just, she just won. So now all, uh, all the funds that's locked up in the original betting contract is going to be sent to her address. And uh, but there's no way for Bob to cheat. So that's one of the benefit of uh, doing a lot of uh, on peer to peer on chain games because uh, it's transparent and uh, everybody has to abide by the gaming rule. There's no way to cheat. So let's uh, come back. Okay, so. We have uh, demonstrated uh, what uh, the output transaction technique is. It looks very simple at the at the first class, but uh, we briefly also talk about how it's uh, implemented internally. Which uh, you, if you want to understand, you can understand. But this because at Script, we wrap it up in a very 
high, le uh, high level language and also in a very simple library. You can just with one line, you can you can use this technique. You don't have to code up anything. So once you have this uh, uh, technique building, you can build a lot of uh, contracts that which was uh, deemed impossible before. So I showed uh, quite a few, for example, I showed how to do control the, the output of the spending transaction. And also I show you how to uh, maintain state across uh, different uh, smart contract uh, transactions based on which we have a lot of other contracts. So if you want to know more, just go to our homepage at sscript.io, which uh, we can we we release all the code open source. We just mentioned all the contract examples like Tic Tac Toe or Game of Life or even uh, Auction. It's all open source. If on the homepage, you can click go to our GitHub page. You are also very welcome to join our Slack channel. So and uh, we discuss uh, all all kinds of uh, smart counter ideas uh, they almost daily. So it's a very good time to start building. Thank you.